Welcome to tonight's BBC News. I'm Mick E. Mouse. And I'm Prince Charming. Tonight we have a great broadcast with Democratic contender Dennis Kucinich, congressman from Ohio. Recently, Mr. Kucinich has announced his candidacy for the 2012 Democratic primaries. Let's go to him live. In recent weeks, our relationship with Pakistan has been called into question. After the assassination of Osama bin Laden was carried out under Barack Obama's command without the consent of the Pakistani government, they have had little reason to trust our intentions. In fact, a Gallup poll showed that 59% of Pakistanis think that the U.S. is their greatest threat. How can we claim to be benefiting a country in which the majority of the people who live there uh, are afraid of us? It is clear that they do not trust us and that in order to make them trust us, we must treat them as equals and not as people to be conquered. We must remove all of our troops from within their borders immediately. I have felt this way all along, and since these recent events, my opinion has only grown stronger. We are Americans, and we must act, must, we are Americans, and we must act with the dignity that people expect of us. Woo! Yeah, got it! Big D! Woo! One. Wow, what a great speech, Mick. Yeah, it was all right. Oh, gorgeous. Rough kitty. Yeah. Now we're off to a pre-recorded conversation between the man of the hour and Prince Sean. Good day. Today on the BBC, we have a Democratic contender, Dennis Kucinich. Yay! He's here to talk about his debt reduction policy with us. Thank you, Prince. It's great to be here. Well, let's get to it. What is your plan to tackle the national debt? Well, in 1999, I supported the Debt Relief IMF Reform Act, which worked heavily to reform the IMF, the International Money F Monetary Fund. Well, what were the effects of that bill? The legislation worked on closing ESAF, the Enhanced Structural Adjustment Facility, and used its resource reserves for debt relief, as well as write off heavy debt burdens on poor nations. Well, you have obviously proven yourself in the past, but what do you plan to do now in 2011? Well, some of my viewpoints are that the benefits to given to veterans are inadequate and that our defense budget is too expensive. We need affordable prescription drugs for everyone because without these medications, people suffer. Huh? Um, but most importantly, Dennis, you need to cut wasteful areas such as costly Department, er, department of Defense, in your opinion. Is that true? Yes, it is true. I, mean, I also support the Progressive Tax Act of 2003, which in total raised $20 billion for deficit reduction and new spending. Well, we're running short, Dennis. Is there anything else you'd like to address? Yes, overall I'm against tax increase and will vote against them. Increasing airline passenger rates, cost of Medicare to seniors, you name it, it will not be passed. There will be no new tax increases. You heard it here, folks. Dennis flies southwest. His bags fly free, no interest rates. Back to Mick in the studio. Hey, thanks, Mick. Uh, now we're off to Guantanamo to see the situation there. President Barack Obama said he was going to close down Guantanamo Bay. There was much debate over whether or not the camp should remain running or not. As you can see, the prisoner camp is still up and running. Every day, more and more prisoners are taken in. And once they pass the entrance gate, nobody knows what goes on. What we do know is that Dennis Kucinich wants the camp closed. Two weeks before the 9-11 attacks, Kucinich started the Department of Peace and Nonviolence, which strongly supports human rights as well as promotes peace. He would like to strengthen non-military means of peacemaking and prevent violence. With speculation of human rights being stripped of the detainees and rumors of harsh treatment, it is clear Kucinich wants Guantanamo closed. That's all from Guantanamo. This is Mick Mouse. Back here in the newsroom, Yo, Mick, how'd you get out of there alive? Well, I don't know. Coming up next, we have a live report with Kitty after commercials. Hey, is that Dennis Kucinich? Thanks, guys. We're here live from the Capitol reporting on Dennis Kucinich's plans for Medicare and Medicaid reform. In the past, Kucinich has supported Medicaid, but he says he'd rather take it away than streamline it with other health programs. As for Medicare, Kucinich supports health care for all and introduced a bill to provide high quality health care to all Americans from any doctor they choose. Kucinich believes that there should be no co-pays 
premiums or deductibles and that this care should incorporate dental, vision, and in or outpatient pr procedure coverage as well as pharmaceuticals. Pusinich has held senior summits on healthcare in the past and although he doesn't believe Medicare Part D should exist, he is willing to help seniors get all of the information they need to choose the correct health plan. He is currently a sponsor of the Medicaid Community-Based Attendant Services and Supports Act, which provides for personal care or nursing home coverage for individuals, and he wants Medicaid laws to be less restrictive and include spiritual health. But how would all of these expenses be covered? Well, Kucinich believes it would be the same expense as what the government currently spends on health care, plus the savings on reduction of paperwork and a small tax on the top 5% of income earners. Reporting live from the Capitol, I'm Kitty Purry for BBC News. <clears throat> We're live. Uh, coming up next, we have another interview. Thank you, Mick. In the past year, Congress has debated heavily about health care. What has Kucinich done concerning this issue? Well, Kucinich is focused on making health care more affordable to the masses. Kucinich believes that pharmaceutical companies have had long-standing monopolies, which have limited competition, sending prices through the roof. Kucinich proposed a free market drug act for some government intervention with this issue, and I agree with his actions. Well, Dr. Shupor, what I think you are overlooking is the fact that pharmaceutical companies are businesses. Developing new drugs is extremely costly. I'm talking millions of dollars. Drug patents protect the rights of these companies and allow them to earn back what they lost during research and development. The government should not have a right to regulate their business model. It is not a matter of business. It is a matter of saving people's lives. Even people's insurance will not cover the newest and most expensive of drugs. People have had to take out second mortgages to pay for their drugs or even go without. Kucinich's ideas for pharmaceutical reform would most effectively help people to get drugs they need to survive. Kucinich's proposition simply displaces the costs for drugs from the people and insurance companies directly to the government. Call me a conservative, but I don't think the government should be at all involved with paying for research and development bills at Pfizer. Thank you, doctors. I'm going to have to cut you off because your phone lines have been ringing off the hook. People want to know what you think on Kucinich's educational policy. Dr. Octus, do you have anything to say about this? Uh, uh, uh. I can't disagree with the fact that education reform is necessary. We all know that in order to keep up with the growth of other nations, we must ameliorate the quality of instruction in our schools. However, some of Kucinich's policies push this amelioration too far. His 2007 Universal Pre-Kindergarten Act asked for fully funded pre-kindergarten programs for children ages 3 to 5. This plan would require excessive government spending, which would detract from the effectiveness of other programs. Dr. Shupal. Well. There may be some truth to what Dr. Antis has said, but on the whole, Kucinich's ideas about education are pointing America in the right direction. With a widespread pre-kindergarten program, it could bring our students benefits such as higher academic achievement and higher graduation rates. Also, if we are not investing money in our future, we are setting ourselves up for failure. We have seen state-funded programs fail in the past, and it is now time to take a new approach. What are your opinions on some of Kucinich's other policies? His desire to protect the disabled and disadvantaged is admirable, but some of his actions have been suspect. At one point, he supported the No Child Left Behind Act, whereas now he criticizes standardized testing for children. Well, that may be true, but his politics would help our failing education system. Classrooms with fewer than 18 students, a thousand new, a hundred thousand new teachers, trained in seven-year and improved math and science education. These are things that our nation could definitely benefit from. He is also a member of the Committee on Education, and we should not argue with such an expert. Thank you, doctors. We're going to have to end this here because we're, had, we're going over time, and there's a badminton tournament beginning right now. Thank you, Dr. Antis and Dr. Shupal. Back to you, Prince. Oh, hey, well, that's our show. That's our show. Catch you next week, where we discuss the eternal question of crunchy or creamy peanut butter as well as special guests from the movie Jaws. Bye-bye.